Hi, everybody. Hey. All right. I see people coming in. Let me get my screen shared. I love that counter of participants going up and up and up. I know. I like <laughs> to see that go up and up. All right, everybody. As you are joining us, I'd love to know in the chat, um, how did you hear about this webinar? So we reached out to people in various ways and we want to know, um, did you get an email? Did you see it on Facebook? Did you see it when you logged into Jackrabbit? Um, just curious how you heard about it. Oh, LinkedIn. That's a good That's one. That's a good one. I was just thinking the same thing. Yeah. Awesome. Oh my gosh. I love it. Look at all these people with email. Yes. You know, it's always the thing, like, is email still work? Do people still see them? Are you like me and like just mass delete <laughs> emails when you go in your inbox and you're not even going to open them? I think um, you always have that one account that probably has 20,000 emails that you haven't looked at that you use for shopping. And then <laughs> Old Navy emails like four times a day, I swear. Get good coupons that way. So <laughs> I know Lauren's feeling the love that people are seeing her emails. So awesome. All right. Well, that is my um, trick to make sure that everyone can hear me. Chat's working, so we will get started. But um, hopefully you are here because you want to hear about how Jackrabbit can help you save money in 2024. Um, so we are recording this webinar. And since you registered, we will send it out to you um, usually within 24 hours. So you can watch it on demand or share it with a coworker. Um, if you want to engage with other attendees, do not hesitate to use the chat. Um, we love as speakers to see you guys bantering back and forth and engaging with the things that we're talking about, telling us what you love and what you want to know more about. If you have questions, please put that in the Q&A and we will get to those at the end. We, um, we have some special guests that are helping moderate our chat. So um, Is there a difference between Q&A and chat, Amber? Sorry. Yeah. So the Q&A will just um, basically put it in a queue so that when we get to the questions at the end, um, we'll be able to pop through those and see which ones we're answering. Um, the chat, you can put questions there, but we might miss them because there'll be a lot of activity. So if you want to make sure something gets answered, just throw that in the Q&A. So let's get started. Um, my name is Amber Smith, and I am the product marketing manager here at Jackrabbit. Um, the best part about my job is getting to do things like this, where I get to help uh, studio owners, uh, gym staff, swim school instructors um, across the whole gamut learn how to do their job easier. And today I am honored to co-host with Yurina Jones. <laughs> um, she's taught me 90% of what I know. So <laughs> I wish that um, was true. But <laughs> Yurina is the director of client success um, and her team focuses on retention. She's been here how long, Yurina? Don't tell years? people that. It's been 17 years that we started out with a support team and have developed to this point. So well, I you're only like 27. So no, it's yes, fine. that's right. Yeah, I was 17 when I started. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, we like to have a good time around here. So today we are going to focus on um, where we know our industries are. And we want to get into a little bit of the, you know, great debate of online payments. Some people are very pro e-payments and some people are a little skeptical. So we're going to, we're going to talk about that. And then we are going to go into the three money saving tactics for this year and how uh, Jackrabbit can help you do those three things. So if you are familiar, we, um, publish an industry benchmark report every year. We've been doing it since 2020. Um, and we just published this one um, a couple weeks ago, a week and a half ago. And what we do is we take all the data from our clients over the last few years and just really drill down, drill down into it to see what the trends are, what we can um, predict for the upcoming year. And it's just a great way to help our clients see where they are so they can determine the opportunities they have to stand out. So in 2023, 
which is the dark blue line, um, we can see that the revenue is trending up. Um, which is a great thing. We see the seasonality dips that we are, you know, aware of. They're consistent. Business looks pretty healthy. Um, you know, 2021 was, well, and 22, a little bit were recovery years. Um, we we took 2020 off the chart. Um, <laughs> we're ready to, to stop looking back at that. Um, but everything is trending in the right direction. Um, so that is a plus. Um, I had a proud moment when we looked at tuition prices because you're doing the things that you need to do and raising tuition. Um, we did look at this by our different editions. So our class edition is mainly gymnastics, but also includes cheer, music, and some other miscellaneous um, sports and activities. And then we've got dance and swim. My class people, like they really raised <laughs> their tuition prices a great bit this year. Um, so I am curious if you guys wanna throw in the chat, like how often are you raising your prices? Are you doing it annually, like on a consistent basis or is it very occasional? Um, and when you're raising those prices, are you thinking about all of the things that you're doing behind the scenes um, that, you know, this price raising should account for? Because I think it's really easy to forget that, you know, it's not just the time that you're in the gym, in the pool, in the studio. Um, it's all the things that are happening behind the scenes. So I'm checking out the chat and I'm happy to see we've got some people that are doing annual tuition raises. That's great. I know sometimes that's that can feel hard to do. All right, Kirk, they're raising them every few years. Three years, wow, okay. Yeah. All right, so I can tell that it's on your minds to do. Um, on a regular basis, you have um, a strategy, whether it's annual or every few years. Um, so that is great. I love that you guys are doing that. So all these trends look great, but you might be like, hmm, I'm not really feeling that in my pocket so much as what you're showing me. Um, so in addition to what we saw from the data, we, we also hear things from our industry. So inflation is up. Um, cost of doing business is higher than it has been. Um, a lot of our industries are still having workforce challenges, more contractors. So maybe, you know, you're paying more per hour and automation is a necessity more than ever. Um, so that take home revenue is not really increasing at the rate of everything else. Um, so I thought that was really interesting that we see everything trending in the right direction, but maybe we're not feeling that. Um, Irina, did you have any? thoughts on that? Yeah, I was wondering, like, do you feel like there are, are things that are processes that could be modified or tools that could be introduced to sort of help with some of that heavy lifting in the, you know, especially with workforce challenges? Absolutely. It's like the perfect segue into the oh. next thing. <laughs> All right. So um, online payments. And when I say the great debate, I mean, we're going to keep it very, very nice in here. And I know we all have different opinions about online payments and some people, um, you know, it's a necessity and some people it's a luxury. So we want to be, we want to be kind in the chat when we're, we're having this debate, but we know that online payments are convenient. You get your money faster as the owner. Parents can pay anytime either through um, the parent portal or maybe you've got them on auto draft. So everyone is benefiting. Um, but that doesn't mean that everyone is pro online payments. And we're, we're aware of that. It's more of a house divided topic. And again, we're using the word debate lightly. So there's so much sentiment around online payments and people get really passionate about it because we're talking about money here. Yurina, do you think that this is the cost of doing business? Personally, I do. Uh, you know, the discussion and the debate is always the dreaded processing fees, and people are so frustrated by the cost of processing fees. And, you know, the credit 
card processing fees, much of that comes from Visa and MasterCard, which is to some degree uncontrollable. But you know, some of the things that people don't realize in the cost of those fees are things like rewards cards. So you know, your offer, your parents are out there, and for example, I have a City Rewards card, and I get two percent cash back on that. Visa and MasterCard doesn't give those rewards away for free. They have to collect that somewhere, and that is a, you know one of those factors that people don't realize or think about in the cost of credit card processing. So, you know, it's those perk cards that encourage your parents to spend money that, you know, uh, they want to spend more because they get the points and the cash back or the gas or the airline miles or what have you. Um, but it also contributes to the cost that you experience as a business. So, um, oh yeah, you have that great debate slide in terms of the cost. This is a really good simplified example, Amber, right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this illustration, again, overly simplifies what a $100 payment would look like. So the light blue is what your net deposit would be. And then that dark blue, the yellow and the green, those are different pieces of those processing fees that go to various places. And, you know, we, we're we humans. We You guys are working your tails off. You want as much of that to be light blue as possible, and we totally understand. So while we can't make these processing fees disappear, we do have some options um, that we'll share in a bit. So hold tight on that. But I, I must admit, I do like going on a vacation with some free miles. <laughs> well, they're not free because I paid for them somewhere, but um, the planes- I might or might not have shopped with my 2% cash back. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but I you also see. feel like time is money too. And you mentioned that earlier. So, mm -hmm. you know, certainly we have people out there that feel like saving that money, you know, in terms of processing fees, they want to manually enter payments and things like that. And, and I feel like some people forget that you have to pay yourself first. Absolutely. I mean, a thousand percent. I see- both sides of the coin, but I just want to make sure that, you know, the time you are spending is well spent. So um, in my previous life, 20 years ago, but I'm only 25, um, I used to work at a dance studio. Um, I was a teacher. I was a competitor. Um, I worked in the office. I did everything except for own the place. And I, that was not for me. So um, this, you know, was a while ago. So compliance regulations weren't as high. Jan and Paula, our e-payments team, are probably cringing as I'm telling this story. But we had um we had a binder of forms and those forms had the entire credit card number on it, the CVV, the zip code. And for 1400 families, once a month, I had to key in those numbers and print off two receipts. One went into an envelope and those envelopes went into the student's mailbox out in the lobby. And then the other one had to be manually entered into the studio management software because at that point we weren't really online. 20 years ago, Jackrabbit was you know coming out since we're celebrating 20 years. Um, so everything was desktop. And on top of that, I was also, um, answering the phones, answering emails, you know, keeping the office flowing. So the amount of time that it took for me to do that, I mean, it was just, it was hard. It definitely wasn't one shift's work. It took me a few shifts, um, which also delayed the money coming in. So for those of you that are manually processing and adjusting accounts, you know, think about what you could do with the time that you could save, um, Focus on building your business instead of just keeping up. Um, when you think of the time that it takes, you know, you've got to include collecting the payments, chasing down those that didn't pay, chasing down bounced checks, stopping at the bank, posting payments manually to accounts because you need all of that to be updated and jackrabbit. So if this, you know, works for you, great. But ask yourself, can you grow with that process or does there need to be a change? And Kirk, you are correct. My math that is totally it. off. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked at that too. I think we did some editing here. <laughs> uh -huh. We did. That's okay. Um, so 
I'll fix that. You're totally correct. I don't know what I was doing when I was doing this, but, um, but the point is if it takes you 10 hours per month and that's $20 an hour, that's 200 a month, a month. But I think the point being made here is I think that if you charged yourself $10, you know, $20 an hour, I have literally seen people in support come to us and they are entering in hundreds of payments. They're spending in a day, mm -hmm. two or three hours entering payments and modifying things. So, you know, when you think of that in a day, that's $60, you know, at the beat each day or, you know, twice a month that they're processing payments that would hot, easily cover your credit card processing. Yep. And I'm pulling up my calculator because clearly I thought I was better at math than I am. That would be 2,400 a year. Yep. I thought so, <laughs> but I was just making sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that is still money that could go back in your pocket. I, I made you guys think it was a little bit more and that was definitely not on purpose. Um, but yeah, that's money back in your pocket that you could be putting into your marketing or um, maybe you uh, start a new program or you open a new space, you know, investing back in your business so that you can generate more revenue. All righty. So we covered the basis. I know you guys are ready to get into the good part of this, um, but you, you know, Business is great, but you want to feel the fruits of your labor. So now we need to put some money back in your wallet. So here are the three tactics that we want to talk about today. Um, automation, we've already talked about, you know, there is so much need for automation. At this point, we get requests all the time for, can we automate this? Can we automate that? And not only does that help you save your time, but maybe that helps you save a staff person or two. Um, saving money with your monthly subscription. This one makes me want to jump out of my seat because it's so incredibly exciting. And then recouping some of your processing fees. I promise that is not an April Fool's joke. That is for real. Um, Jackrabbit's got some new features, so mm -hmm. I won't keep you waiting. Let's jump in. Oh, I skipped. There we go. Okay. So processing <laughs> online payments, which we call e-payments, um, that is integrated into Jackrabbit and we currently have three processors. So Jackrabbit can post tuitions for tuition fees for you on a recurring basis. Um, when you set it up for your session, you do have to set it up, but once you set it up, you can just let it ride. Um, but the second part of that is e-payments allows you to automate your entire billing process all the way from um, posting those fees to processing the payments. So it is like an auto draft experience. That is a real auto draft experience for both you and the parents. So when families have a card on file, they and you can worry less about them making their payments on time. Um, and you can take it to the next level. One of I feel like the most um, least talk about features that I think is fantastic are the automated email notifications, and that includes declines. So you don't have to pick up the phone and have the awkward conversation. I think everyone on here has probably had a compromise card because it, it happens very often, and they just need that reminder that, oh yeah, I have that card on file. Let me go update it. So Yurina, um there might be some news here that people um, haven't really heard of. I'm not so. going to steal your thunder. <laughs> <laughs> I said three processors and some people are probably thinking we only have two. So can you tell us about those? So we certainly, we do have three providers. Um, recently we launched Jackrabbit Pay. Uh, we still maintain very strong relationships with our existing partners. Um, and all three integrate with Jackrabbit. Um, Jackrabbit Pay, uh, we launched, uh, you know, near the end of 2023 um, and is also fully integrated with Jackrabbit. Um, 
it allows us to offer a bit of new functionality, which we're going to talk about in the next coming slides, um, which is really exciting and, and has some cost saving benefits. Um, but ideally, you're welcome to talk to any of us. You can talk to any of our providers. You can discuss rates. You can discuss functionality, payouts, all of those things. Um, and all, you know, all three of those, we wanted people to have a choice. And um, all three of those also work with, you know, our functionality of reoccurring or set it and forget it tuition posting and or set it and forget it tuition payments. So, um, you know, that's where we're talking about the time is money. So yes, we have three partners, but we also have the functionality in there to automate these processes. So if you are using e-payments, uh, you are integrated and you're not manually spending the time doing it. Um, so absolutely uh, feel free if you wanna talk to any of our providers, you can, or you can start with our e-payments team and they can provide you contact information and information about each. I love it. So that was that was number one. Here comes my favorite. So the latest release was PayPass. And you may be thinking, what in the world is that? But I'm here to explain, give some context. So our latest release um, is PayPass. And when you opt for PayPass, you get access to Jackrabbit's features for $0 per month. So all of our core features um, and I say core because if you get the mobile app, you know, that is an upgrade. But um, thinking about all of the features, parent portal, staff portal, online registration, all of that is included. And here is how it works. So um, right now it's only available in the U.S. and there are some eligibility requirements for processing. Um, we have a great team that can help determine if you're eligible. But what happens is you process payments with Jackrabbit Pay, and then a 1.25% technology fee is added onto your online payments. So credit cards, debit cards, ACH. Um, so that processing takes place of your monthly software bill. So you're saving on you know, the software bill that you normally pay once a month that's based on your total student count. You don't have to worry about student count anymore. You can have no a million students. Filing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no lead filing, none of that. Um, we don't uh, take a monthly fee from you anymore. You just process through Jackrabbit Pay and that 1.25% is in place of your monthly subscription fee. So you get to share the cost and the benefits of the software with your families in a way that doesn't break anyone's bank. So, Yurina, what about the processing fees for Jackrabbit Pay? Because I know this is a common question that 1.25% is like, ooh, does this technology fee replace that? So the technology fee, which is paid and, uh, and presented to your parents, does not cover your actual processing fee. It covers your subscription fee with Jackrabbit. So if you are eligible and you are in a $125 price tier, uh, you no longer pay that $125 subscription fee. Instead, uh, you are collecting uh, and Jackrabbit is collecting that processing fee. You are still uh, you know, required to pay the actual credit card processing fee. So we took the cost saving on the subscription end. Awesome. Awesome. So on that note, you know, this is an added fee to parents. Yurina, what is the best way to communicate this update to those customers? Well, there's a couple of things, you know, um, a lot of people are becoming more and more familiar nowadays with things like uh, technology fees. I feel like uh, some of it is regional, but I have uh, children and I am enrolling them in classes and I'm seeing these technology fees because other people are utilizing them as a cost saving. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, you know, there are requirements in certain states and uh, we can help you with that in terms of communicating that to your parents. You know, there are things like updating your legalese and posting notices and doing a rollout transition for that. Um, and there are, you know, a lot of uh, communication efforts that I feel like are just make for good business to communicate that to your parents. Um, and basically, uh, it, it's starting to become a bit more of an expectation. Absolutely. 
I agree with that. So, Yurina, I know we touched on it a little bit, but how does this help our clients who really focus on trying to manage their student count to keep costs low and feel like they're always trying to lead file? Yeah, we get a lot of frustration around the lead file. Um, you know, the lead file is something that, you know, we encourage people to use to keep their subscription costs down because Jackrabbit does charge on the number of active and inactive students. Um, however, you know, it does have some foibles, if you will, in terms of having to lead file an entire family versus individual students. Um, and so if you're on the pay path program, essentially, you know, you don't have to worry about that anymore. And so you can keep all those students in your database. That's huge. All right. So now I'm going to flip it a little bit. So let's remove technology fees from our brains so that we don't get these mixed up. Um, a highly requested feature that we've been asked for is surcharges. So you may um, you may think of this as like a convenience fee. It's it's the same it's the same concept as what we'll say. They do have different meanings. So in a perfect world, processing credit cards would be free. but, we know that they're not. <laughs> um, and until then, we want to help you get some of your money back. So surcharges can be added to credit card payments. Um, this does not include Amex, and you cannot surcharge on debit cards or ACH. Um, this is another feature that is currently available with Jackrabbit Pay and only available in the U.S. right now. I say that to say we're also looking at adding other countries, and that is on our Jackrabbit Pay roadmap. Um, we do encourage you to check the laws in your states as a few have restrictions, um, but this was something that, you know, we've been asked for for years, and in the past, you know, we encourage people to raise tuition prices. And again, this is one of those great debate house divided topics. Um, and we know that one size doesn't fit all. So Yurina, how do you see this helping youth activity center owners who wanted to process e-payments but have held off? Gosh, this has been asked about for, oh gosh, countless years. Um, you know, people want a way to recoup some of that credit card expense. Absolutely understand that. So while this is different than PayPath because it's not talking about covering your Jackrabbit subscription costs, this is a way for you to actually recruit some of your processing money back. Um, and so uh, especially, you know, similar to PayPath and a technology fee, surcharges is becoming, you know, more prevalent. Sadly, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, I just had to pay my property taxes. And uh well, I kind of mucked up with the bank. And so literally, I've never had this before, but the tax man came to my door. I was shocked. And uh, something had happened to my payment. Turned out it was returned by the bank. And uh, so I was just so panicked. I went online and I paid it and I paid a surcharge and I paid a, a good surcharge, but it got it done. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, you know, surcharges is one of those things that is a little bit more heavily regulated by the credit card companies. So, you know, there are uh, states, for example, that uh, only allow surcharging for uh, nonprofit or government entities, that kind of thing. So we are happy to go through uh, where you are and how it can be implemented. Um, but it really does allow you to recoup some of those costs that people find frustrating. Absolutely. And we've had clients that have gone and done this in a manual way, which again is more time yeah. and more money. Um, so, you know, now this can be automated for you. Jackrabbit and Jackrabbit Pay are smart enough to know, hey, this is a credit card. You can surcharge and add that automatically. Um, or, hey, this is a debit card and we can't surcharge on it. So, And it's reflected in your reporting as well. So it's easy to recognize where the surcharging is coming into play. So um, absolutely something to consider inquiring about, I believe, um, especially if those credit card you know, charges are frustrating to you and a business concern. Absolutely. Um, it feels like Christmas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so if you are new here, which means you have heard about Jackrabbit, but you are not a client yet, 
Um, before we hop to q and I want to make sure whoever you are and whatever your status is with us that you know what to do next. So if you're exploring software, please connect with us. Um, if you have questions, you can email us at info at jackrabbittech.com and one of our onboarding coaches will get your questions answered. If you're like sold, I am ready to get started. Uh, with Jean, Jack look at Jean's <laughs> mention. Thank you, Jean. Oh, thank I'll send you. you your check later. <laughs> um, if you are ready to see what Jackrabbit is all about and see what other features we offer, because this is just the tip of the iceberg, you can start your free trial account today. I've got those. Um, oops about to change my slide. Um, I've got those websites up for you. So jackrabbitclass.com slash free trial or jackrabbitdance.com slash free trial. Um, if you are a Jackrabbit client and you are just dancing in your chair like me, Yorina, and Jean are right now, we're excited. Um, you can scan this QR code what it'll do is it will open up your email and it will auto populate the pay info at jackrabbittech.com email address. And just let us know what features you want to know more about. Was it the automated billing? Was it Jackrabbit Pay, PayPath, or surcharges, or maybe all of it? Um, that will just help us get you uh, connected with the right person. Um, we, I do think we have the best customer support here at Jackrabbit, and um, we've got a team ready that ready to help you with all of your questions or you know if you're ready to start that automated billing process let's get that set up i really so, appreciate that comment thank you so much <laughs> i okay. promise she didn't pay me and i didn't just say it because she's my co-host um i do honestly believe that i so, might pay jean but that's okay no i'm teasing <laughs> <laughs> so i'm gonna leave that information up here um as we take some questions i do see one question in the q a box but if you've got questions for me and Yurina, um if you'll put those in that Q&A box, I'll start reading those out to Yorina, um, but I want to give you time to type those in. So um, I'll go ahead and start answering these or asking these to Yorina to answer as they come in. So oh gosh, don't get me on. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, I think this one came up when we were talking about pay paths. So whoever submitted this, if I'm incorrect, please just correct me. So they're asking the fee is added to each account when we process. Is this not a deterrent for parents to go on auto pay? The fee, repeat that. I apologize. So that they're they're verifying the fee is added to each account when we process. Yes. Correct. That, correct. So yeah. So this is presented to parents. So for example, if you have a hundred dollar tuition, there is a processing fee attached to that tuition that the parent is presented with at the time that they are making the payment. Uh, it is reflected in the payment. It is reflected on the transaction and your reporting. Yep. And so the second question to that was, is this not a deterrent for parents to go on auto pay? That's a really great question. Um, you know surcharging and processing or pardon me technology fees that's something that you have the opportunity to do it is becoming absolutely more prevalent uh if your area is much more sensitive to that the alternative is of course you can raise your your own tuition costs uh and then it is embedded in that but if you are looking for a direct recovery of some of those processing processing fees um you know this is what that is for for the Absolutely. surcharging. And then the subscription is the technology fee is a cost saving to you on the software, of course. For sure. Um, so if any of our attendees today were curious about getting set up with Jackrabbit Pay, about how long does that take? That's a really great question. So if you are uh, a current processor or a non-processor, it usually takes around two to three days to fill out the application um, and get set up for Jackrabbit Pay. Um, at the same time, if you want to understand if you are uh, eligible for PayPath to see if you can uh, save your subscription fees, uh, they can immediately look into that if you are an existing client. If you are a new client, uh, it's still the same pro or time to get uh, set up on Jackrabbit Pay, two to three days. Uh, and then we would ask for processing statements for eligibility uh, to see if you're eligible for PayPath. 
Awesome. So um, I like the idea of letting my parents pay their own credit card fees. How quickly can I set that up? So surcharges. Surcharges. You That is, I'm going to say it's the flip of the switch to some degree. So when you say, yes, Jackrabbit, I would like to start surcharging, you know, we can turn that on. But what we want to do is work with you on a coordinated effort because there's communication that should happen to your uh, parents in advance. And so um, what we do is we ask for an effective date. When would you like to start this? Perhaps it might be on the first of your next billing month, what have you. Um, but uh, we will work with you on the timing of that. So it can be today. It could be a week from now. We want to help you do it the right way. So we encourage um, the communication to parents. Correct. Um, so I think I saw this question in the chat, but I think it's a good one to just get out there. So we talked about three payment processors. What's the difference between these processors? All of our processors offer the same processing rates. So, um, you know, the difference is, so our three processors are CNH Financial, uh, safe, safe payments. And then now we have the introduction of Jackrabbit Pay. Uh, and so all of them offer competitive rates. Uh, some of the functionality that we've talked about today, such as PayPath and surcharging, is restricted to Jackrabbit Pay. So you, it requires you to be processing on Jackrabbit Pay in order to use that functionality. Um, but ultimately, um, you know, the, the, the support, we find that the support offered by our uh, partners is excellent. Um, you know, and Jackrabbit Pay support team is in-house. Um, and so they can answer questions on anything, um, but if it requires assistance on pay path surcharging um, and future functionality to come down the road, that would be Jackrabbit Pay. Awesome. Well, we talked about some great features today. So can I get my software for free and surcharge? Whew. In theory, yes, you could. <laughs> Do I think that's a good idea? I'm not so sure. I think it's a burden on your parents to do that. And I'm a frugal Dutch girl. So <laughs> um, physically, possibly, yes, you can pay path and surcharge at the same time. We have had people asking that. I would really dig into that with your clientele and see if that's feasible. That's my advice. Agreed. You can do both and decide how much you want to save in 2024, but make sure that you don't upset anyone before you That's pull the trigger on both. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think this is another common question. If I decide to surcharge, do I get to set the amount? Ah, surcharging is regulated. And so surcharging is regulated by the credit card companies and there are maximums. For example, you can't surcharge more than your processing rate. And so that surcharging fee is a fixed rate based on what your processing rate is. And most processing, for example, we offer 2.89 plus a 30 cent transaction fee. So your surcharging rate would be maxed out at 2.89%. Um, and then you're still required to pay that 30 cent transaction fee. That's not a cost that Jackrabbit uh, forces on people. That's a credit card cost because nothing runs through Visa or MasterCard for free. <laughs> This is true. Sadly. Um, oh, this is a good one. Um, so if we are including spot TV, hmm. can the technology fee be set for a certain amount instead of just 1.25? I'm not certain how spot TV factors. So I think they're connecting so to cover technology. some of the cost of spot TV. Yeah. 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 That that one point two five percent is also a fixed amount, so that's not something that we uh, is is entered by you. That's entered when you set up. So there is still the cost of Spot TV, and there is still the cost for the mobile app if you um, currently subscribe to either of those. Yeah, and you want to think about that technology fee as it's not revenue to you. So when you get it's that covering. net deposit, we've already we've already pulled that out. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't receive yeah. that money. Yeah, correct. Um, I think we've got all the questions answered. 
If I had anything to say, I would just encourage anybody, you know, we've been uh, working on releasing surcharges and pay path and automations have been out for some time now, but it's very easy to flip those scripts in your head. What's a technology fee? What's a surcharge? But at a very minimum, there is a no obligation if you want to talk to one of our e-payments team. I don't know if you want to put that slide up again, Amber, with sure. the contact information, um, but the e-payments team is absolutely absolutely there to answer any of your questions. And it's not an obligation thing. I sound like a commercial from 1970, no obligation, but <laughs> it doesn't hurt to ask questions. And I encourage anybody that's attended this webinar to reach out and uh, get some information on it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you there's also information on our help center too. So if you go to our help content and type in PayPath and surcharges, there's some great information in there. It shows you the map. Um, and that's available to anybody that has a database and wants to access that help content. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if it can save you some money, it is definitely worth um, checking out. We get asked for it and have been asked for it for some time, and it's finally here. Yeah. All right. Well, Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I hope thanks you for having me, Amber. It's been so nice to be client facing again. I've been. We should do it again sometime. <laughs> um, but we do appreciate all of you joining us today and taking the time. I hope you got some kind of exciting nugget out of this presentation. And look out for the recording tomorrow in your inbox. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everyone.